this is 1 Peter 4 and verse 7. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. Kal halal Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai by Hashem Rekakadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, where I learned this truth from. Peace and salutations to the brothers on down, teaching and preaching, pushing this gospel. Good news to four corners of the earth, waking up the hopeful elect of Israel. Greetings also to the few sisters that tune into these video epistles from the text we just read. I'm calling the lesson, The End of All Things is at Hand. You see the Most High's hand at work causing this wretched man. What man? The Edomite. He wants you to call him the white man. He's got temporary charge of the earth and he's ruling in absolute wickedness. He's terrorizing the earth and all the inhabitants and it's about to come to an end. So that's probably why the spirit has got me on this kind of line here. The end of all things. Let's read it again. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. Remember Peter was the, the head of the church. And so he's giving an <clears throat> exhortation to be watchful in this time. The, the rejected son. He has no spiritual father. He's, he's hated this is Esau Edom, the white man. He's about to make his move. And in this same chapter, we are being warned here in verse 17, for the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of the Most High, whose name is Yahweh, meaning he is. He's the existing one, his only begotten son. His name is Yahweh Shai. He's our savior, redeemer, high priest in the heavens. That's our power. That's the names. We don't mess with those names. And if at first, if it first begin at us, that's the house of David, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of the Most High? So we need to be on our guard at this time speaking to false prophets amongst us. They're jumping up and exposing themselves with their bullshit doctrines, their vain babblings. They're really manifesting themselves like never before. There's a scripture, I think it's it's in Jeremiah, it could be 49 and 10, that speaks about Esau being laid bare. But amongst us, there's, amongst us, we have been laid bare with this so-called white man as well. Because all the lies and vain babblings, nonsense doctrines, they're all coming out. Let's have a look at some more scriptures here. Let's go to I think Matthew. Matthew 13. Let's start at 37. I think this is the, yes, the parable of the sower. So we know the story. Let's just catch it here where Yahweh Shai is answering. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. Who's that? It's, that's us, the children of Israel. They're calling us by words of Negroes, Native Americans, and the Hispanic tribes. But the tares are the children of that wicked one. You see? Who's that? The Edomite, the white man, the devil that the Bible speaks of. Verse 39, the enemy that saw them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world and the reapers are the angels. Verse 40, as therefore the tears are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. We see in a, in a different scripture in Second Ezra 6, 7 to 9, where it says, Esau is the end of the world. In this case, world meaning aeon. It's Greek, A-E-O-N. The end of a specific period of uninterrupted rulership. That's what's coming to an end. And he thinks he can push back and fight. That's what he's preparing for. In all 
of his mad schemes that he is pushing forward. As therefore the tears are gathered and burn in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, that's multiple sins. This wretched man, he functions, he's profaned. All of his activity, his very being is profane. He doesn't know righteousness. He can't tell the truth. He's a perpetual liar. He's filled with hate. And shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. The kingdom of their father. I think we, let's jump to we have Jeremiah here. Jeremiah, I don't think I marked this one. Let's see if we can find it. Jeremiah 31. Whose father, who is, who's speaking here? What's this about? Verse 30, Jeremiah 31, verse 9. They shall come with weeping, and with supplications will I lead them. I will cause them to walk by the rivers of waters in a straight way, wherein they shall not stumble. For I I'm a father to Israel. This, this is our power speaking. How about Shem? How shy? I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. See that? So let's look back here, Matthew 13, 43. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. See, it doesn't matter what you do, you can't change the, what's written in the book. Who has ears to hear, let him here see we want the scriptures to do the talking matthew 24 the end of all things is at hand let's go from three and as he sat this another parable the Hawashai only ever spoke in parables when he was in the public and then when he got his disciples in private he explained what the parables was and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? And Yahawashai answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the anointed, and shall deceive many. It's happening right now. It's at an all-time high. Some of them have set themselves up in schools, calling them Selves all kind of names, grandiose titles. It's quite laughable to look at through the spirit. And ye shall hear of wars and rumours of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. <clears throat> for nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines. I can't wait for the famine. It's going to get really exciting. There's so many proud people walking around. You can't speak to them. They know everything. And pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold but he that shall endure unto the end unto the end of all things the same shall be saved and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come it needs this word has to go to all the nations why because hebrew israelites are there and the elect have to hear the word. Also, the others need to know of their judgment. So that's what's taking place right now. Where are we going to go next? Uh, right. First Corinthians, I think. First Corinthians. Yes, First Corinthians 2, 9 to... 14, I think. 
But as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which the Heavenly Father hath prepared for them that love him. But the Most High hath revealed them unto us. This is Paul speaking to the Hebrew Israelites who were based in Corinth, not the whole of the inhabitants of the area there known as Corinth. This is a madness that is being taught. And we are so glad for our elders and apostles who have allowed us to know this truth through the Spirit revealing unto them the truth of this word. So Paul is addressing the Hebrew Israelites. Verse 10, But the Most High hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of the Most High. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of the heavenly Father knoweth no man, but the spirit of the Most High. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of the heavenly Father. We see the difference right now is becoming increasingly, increasingly clear. What is going on? There's people with microphones, they have platforms. You can just press your button and start recording. You can say anything. And it's, you've got these thousands of people listening. And it's just a lot of nonsense that we might know the things that are freely given to us of the Most High, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth. They go into all these so-called Bible schools and they think they know everything which the Holy Spirit teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of the Most High, for they are foolishness unto him. That This clown, they've given a platform, talking about chariots, and he's denigrating the whole thing. He has no clue what he's speaking about. There's no spirit resting with that man. It's really the congregation of the dead, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. See? But he that is but he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judge of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of the anointed. You see? So you got these people, it's very strange to watch them someone's just put them on a pedestal and they are being used to just to peddle all kind of nonsense second corinthians 4 3 and 4 but if our gospel be hid it is hid to them that are lost the rejected amongst us in whom the god of this world who's that that's the Edomite, the white man. He's blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Hamashiach, who is the image of the Most High, should shine unto them. They can't get it. They're not supposed to. Right, I think we had a few here in the Apocrypha. Second Ezra 2, Second Ezra 10, verse 22, rather. Our psaltery is laid on the ground, our song is put to silence, our rejoicing is at an end. The light of our candlestick is put out, the ark of our covenant is spoiled, our holy things are defiled, and the name that is called upon us is almost profaned. Our children are put to shame. Our priests are burnt. Our Levites are gone into captivity. Our virgins are defiled. And our wives ravished. Our righteous men carried away. Our little ones destroyed. Our young men are bought in bondage to slavery. And our strong men are become weak. So we see this situation playing itself out over and over during the history of the Hebrew Israelites. And we're back in this situation again where they're saying, you are not the people. You look at the state of our nation, the Hebrew Israelite, 
and you marvel that anyone could question who do these prophecies fit throughout the scripture let's go to Sirach 16 I think and verse 22 who can declare the works of his judge justice or who can endure them for his covenant is afar off and the trial that's what we're heading to now the trial of all things is in the end that's where we're heading and we're heading there fast can't come soon enough let's stay with Sirach 43 let's go to start at 26 by him the end of them have prosperous success and by his word all things consist we may speak much and yet come short wherefore in some he is all how shall we be able to magnify him for he is above all his works the lord is terrible and very great and marvelous in his power when ye glorify the lord exalt him as much as ye can for even yet will he far exceed and when ye exalt him put forth all your strength and be not weary for ye can never go far enough who have seen him that he might tell us who and who can magnify him as he is verse 32 there are yet hid greater things than these be for we have seen but a few of his works for the lord hath made all things and to the godly hath he given wisdom see the false prophets liars they can shout all they like but they can't change the words that are written in the book and the judgment that is about to play itself out in the earth isaiah 13 9 to 13 behold the day of the lord cometh cruel both with wrath and fierce anger anger to lay the land desolate and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it for the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. Why? Because the destruction, the intercontinental ballistic missiles and laser fire from the chariots that they speak down about, trying to convince everyone there's these so-called aliens, these little green men with bulging eyes, and size 20 feet but this foolishness doesn't work on the elect let's keep it moving verse 11 and i will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity and i will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible is ruling in wickedness he's ruthless I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Which man we're speaking about? It's the Hebrew Israelite man. Therefore, I will shake the heavens and the earth shall move out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts, whose name is Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, and in the day of his fierce anger. That's what's coming, the end of all things. The scriptures are endless, but let's finish up here going back to Second Peter 3. Let's start at 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt. What's going to cause that? It's nuclear weapons. You're going to be standing with that other scripture in i think it's zephaniah 12 and 14 or 14 and 12 let's speak about your tongue melting in your mouth your eyes melting in the sockets your skin melting off your body it's going to be absolutely terrible let's start reading it again verse 10 second peter 3 but the day of the lord will come as a thief in a night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Verse 11. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, 
looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of the Most High, wherein the heavens, being on fire, shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. You say here it's about terrible. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heaven. New heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Look up this word, new is kainos. It's a refreshing. The earth is going nowhere. It's going to be here. But new management is required. So we have to get this wicked man, the white man. He has no empathy in him. He knows his position. And so he's just murdering, raping, just doing everything he can to destroy. It's like these men you sometimes read about where a relationship has come to an end and they, they kill all the family. It's where if I can't have you, nobody else must have you. So this is the mentality of this white man. He's getting ready to go into slavery for all of his wickedness. He's designed to perform all manner of wickedness with his blessing, the sword. So he's ruling with it. So I don't want to drive, keep the lesson going longer than it needs to be. You've been listening to the end of all things is at hand. Shalom until the next one.